Now let's begin the discussion of the inferior aperture of your thoracic cavity or your thorax, also known as the outlet of the thorax. So the outlet of thorax is basically more larger in than the inlet. The outlet of the thorax is different from the inlet of the thorax in that it is closed off. It is closed off by what? It is closed off by a large musculo tendinous partition known as the diaphragm. It is a very important structure when we talk about the thorax. However, we will not discuss the diaphragm right now, although we have to have a very detailed discussion about the structure of this uh, organ. Basically, I took a transverse section of the body. We are viewing it inferiorly. That the diaphragm has a central tendon. It has a, so if this is the right side, this is the left side. It has a right crust. It has a left crust. Between these two, it lies the, the median arcuate ligament. Apart from this, there is a medial arcuate ligament and then a lateral arcuate ligament on both sides. But that is a discussion for another day. For now, let's talk about the we should know about the central tendon and the median arcuate ligament, the two crosses of the diaphragm, the right and left. So let's talk about the boundaries of the outlet of the thorax. The boundaries involve anteriorly the lower border or the xiphoid process of the sternum. So we all know the sternum basically ends in a tail-like structure. This is the xiphoid process of the sternum. And over here, there are the ribs. If you remember the costal margin of the ribs, all right? So the angle that is formed between the xiphoid process and this costal margin is known as the infra, infra meaning low, sternal angle. So the angle that is formed in the lower sternum, this is known as the infrasternal angle. So anteriorly, the boundary of the outlet of thorax is the infrasternal angle. Posteriorly is the 12th thoracic vertebra and on either side is the lower ribs with their costal margins. So that's the boundary of the outlet of thorax. Now let's begin the discussion of diaphragm. We all know that diaphragm is a musculotendinous partition which has openings. So the openings of the diaphragm are very important. So there is one opening right here in the central tendon. There is one opening that occurs right before there is splitting to form the right crust right over here and one opening that is right behind the median arcuate ligament. These three openings are very important. They are large openings in the diaphragm which allow passage of structures. So what are the structures that pass? So first opening is the vena caval opening as the aorta is the main artery of the heart. The inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava are basically the veins of the heart, main veins. So the vena cava openings allow the passage of inferior vena cava. So the vena cava openings, it lies at the level of T8. Its shape is quadrilateral and the structures that pass along with the vena cava are the PIL, I for the inferior vena cava. P is for the phrenic nerve, the right phrenic nerve. And L is for the lymphatics of the liver. Apart from this, when there is contraction of the diaphragm, there is dilation of this opening. The next opening is the esophageal opening. The name says it. It allows the passage of esophagus. This lies at the level of T10. It is elliptical in shape and it allows the passage of the structures. Love. O stands for the esophagus. V stands for the vagal trunks and L stands for the left gastric vessels and when there is contraction of the diaphragm this opening undergoes constriction. Next we have the aortic opening obviously the descending aorta hall also has to pass through the outside of the thorax and it goes through the aortic opening which lies behind the median arcuate ligament at the level of T12 and the structures that are accompanying the aorta are the ATA. These are the A for aorta, T for thoracic duct. This is a lymphatic system organ. And another A is for the azygous vein. 
This is the venous channel of your entire thorax. And when there is contraction of the diaphragm in case of this opening, there is no change. The diaphragm in its relaxing stage, dome shaped, but in its contracting stage, it becomes flattened. That is one thing you should know. So when there is inspiration, it gets flattened and it contracts. Apart from this, there are multiple small openings. And of these small openings, the most important opening is the space of Larry. The space of Larry allows the passage of the superior epigastric artery. And what's important is when, whenever the space of Larry is enlarged, it is known as the foramen of Morgagni. And the space of Larry that allows passage of superior epigastric artery is enlarged or dilated. It is known as the foramen of Morgagni. Apart from this, this other small openings include the opening that is for the musculophrenic artery at the level of ninth costal cartilage. It perforates the diaphragm. And then there are multiple like intercostal vessels and nerves that pass uh, basically through the diaphragm. Also, there is passage of sympathetic trunks, splanchnic nerves and phrenic nerve. So this was all about the outlet of the thorax. Thank you so much for watching.